So, wait, I am Nate, I am Rubinus, and today we are doing a review for the game Gone Home, which revolves around an elder sister, Katie, coming home after a European trip. While she was away, the family moved into a house inherited after the death of a great uncle, so she is unfamiliar with the layout. She finds the home abandoned, with notes from her younger sister that she is gone and not to come looking for her. The purpose is to clearly disobey your dumb younger sister and find notes and clues as to why she left and where she might have gone. The character must roam around the house finding handwritten notes detailing Sam's, the younger sister, time from youth through her senior year of high school and her love interest that the parents disapprove of. The game will take about two to three hours to complete on a first playthrough. Some of the internal doors are locked requiring the player to find specific clues to unlock secret passageways in the house to get around, which may require some backtracking and some investigation. The gameplay control only has five verbs, but they are very confusing. Consistent. The character will move when asked, focus real hard to look a little further, and pick up or throw things to make the house a little more of a disaster. There was never a time where the game didn't respond to my controls or do an action other than the button that I pressed. The precision in the game is very lenient. The range to select files or objects is decently far, the character can cancel and repeat actions without an issue, and using the controls is not impeded or locked by anything. The game does have a bit of latency as a slight pause when repeating actions, but it's hardly noticeable. And for the speed and type of game, it fits perfectly. The game is a walking Simulate. I do not need to crouch and stand up at Mach 5. There are no timed events and there's nothing to be gained from doing squats. The game frequently encourages the player to use the walking and selecting commands as that is how the player discovers the notes and the story. The crouching, focus, and throwing commands are not encouraged as much to get the information, but there's plenty of opportunity for the player to use them as there are items and little post-its all around. The walking, focus, and selecting actions are very useful throughout the game, but the crouch and throwing actions are not. The crouch only requires to get one or two files, since since most files on the ground can be picked up from a standing position. The throwing command only has the purpose for a secret, but outside of the requirement, it is fun to use for making the mess or just playing around with random objects. Even though the throw is not needed, it's a nice feature just for an extra spice in the game. The game gives full autonomy to the player after the opening cutscene all the way to the final file. There are no times when the player must sit and wait or when the controls are taken away. If the player wishes to speedrun and skip files or abruptly end any voiceover, they are welcome to do so. The character can walk in a full 360 degrees, although the movement is not fine enough to move in perfect curves, but you also don't need to do so in this game. The character moves like a slug, but actually fits and is perfectly paced for the design of the house. The hallways are often short, the rooms are a little spacious to make movement easier, but there is no reason to be sprinting trying to collect these files. Katie is probably jet lagged anyway, and is not really in the mood to be Easter hunting during the rainstorm. The camera is a first person with full 3D view. We never see the model of the character, but we do see some pictures and images of her throughout the game, even though the story is not in any way, shape, or form about her. The view is enough to see far enough ahead, although the lighting can be an issue, but the rooms are wide enough to see the major furniture. The files and important objects are all contrasted with the set pieces and are large enough to be seen at a distance. The view is perfect for the game. The game grows in terms of story and level progression. No new gameplay aspects or verbs are added into the game, but the story is the main focus, and the secret hideouts add some uniquity and flavor to a game about walking around a villa. I can walk around my own house, but I don't have secret passageways even though I would love to have them. I'm just not rich or even enough to get them. The flow of the game is pretty linear and consistent. The story grows at a reasonable pace to make Sam's relationship feel real, but not rushed or just teenage love. There are snippets where it is clear that Sam is hesitant and unsure of the relationship, like most first loves are, and there are also snippets to show that she doesn't truly understand the world yet or think of her future like teenagers often don't. The fragments of the parents show that they don't understand or listen or accept Sam's choices which push her away, but it is all done in a realistic manner and resembles the attitude of many parents and culture of LGBT plus slash queer acceptance in the 90s. As someone who was born into that era, I saw this exact reaction from adults and the same reactions from children. I have seen some criticism from other reviewers that it seems a little ridiculous, but for the majority of the story, it's pretty realistic to my experience watching this happen and listening to stories from other people as I grew up. The game, as you would guess, is not difficult. It has no fail states, timed events, or anything stressful in terms of conflict that would make difficult gameplay. The player can take as much time as they need, backtrack without any punishment or issue, and can rush without any punishment either. The only thing that detracts from the engagement and immersion is the constant horror elements that never show up or have any real use or purpose, and they never really thus add anything 
to the game or to the stories other than little anecdotes. The constant horror atmosphere can push away players who don't care for that type of game and is an issue, since the game presents itself unjustly with a lack of any real terror to the player. The main plot follows Katie trying to unravel what in the wet sand happened to her family after returning from Europe. The house is empty, there was a note from her sister that she herself ran away from home, and there are empty pizza boxes just sitting out. You all are disgusting and inviting roaches. The story unfolds to show that Sam had fallen in love with another girl, her fear of the world finding out, due to the stigma of queers at the time, how the parents eventually find out, and are in denial. Secondary plots follow the father's self-loathing from his own father, who never properly supported him, his failed books, the mother's emotional affair with a co-worker, and the supernatural possibility of the great uncle roaming around the house. To be fair, it was his house, and he has a right to stay there. None of the secondary plots make it into the journal or have voiceovers, but they do add context, depth, and flavor to each other. The secondary plots all weave into each other and into the main story very well. No one is perfect, and everyone has faults. There is a whole subsection of secondary plot added for some horror element of the house which I find is a negative against everything else. While all other stories are about relationships, acceptance, and the pains of relationships in love and family, there is an unnecessary element of fear added into the game. It adds nothing of benefit and actually takes away, as it would make some players afraid to play the game or move forward. There are a few notes that say that there are no ghosts, yet others that say there are. But ultimately, there are no real jump scares except for the one which the player must activate, but otherwise the supernatural elements and stories do nothing to add any flavor to the other plots or the main story at all. The music is pretty sparse, only appearing during the main story elements, but it is a nice emotional backdrop to what is happening. It often comprises of strings, but they reflect the emotion portrayed in the journal entries pretty well. The sounds again are realistic and constant enough to fill in the empty void between the music segments. There is a thunderstorm that constantly has rain, there are footsteps against the hard wood, and random creaks and noises of this old house that add an unnecessary level of horror tension, and also just make it creepy. The game's mechanics are reliable throughout the game. The character must progress through the house, discover the layout and secrets, then find files explaining what happened. The player is not required to pick up and use random objects except for one secret, but there are plenty of secret and hidden channels in the house that the characters must use to traverse around. The game has no manipulative mechanics and doesn't need any. The game offers some assistive mechanics by keeping the doors and drawers open, the lights on, that kind of thing. Since these things don't reset, the player knows what they have already been through and what has already been discovered. The character has a map and updates the map with the secret entries slash cabinets to help the player navigate and know what they might have missed. Main files and objects will also be highlighted to show that they are indeed important. The game has a severe detrimental mechanic of horror added into many parts of the game and story. There are creaks, flickering lights, heavy thunder, static, dark and creepy basements, and a pentagram? There are random notes as well detailing ghosts and supernatural events. All of these make the player nervous and afraid to move forward, unsure if Sam left because there was a poltergeist. My first thought was, good on you girl, I don't know why, particularly white people, always try to expel or reason with a ghost. It's a ghost. The spirit owns the house, and you need to leave. The problem is that there are no ghost sightings, ghost activity, reason for the supernatural events, and make the game scary when no other part is, none of the stories reflect this, and nothing really benefits from it. The game guides the player in the sense of the narrow hallways, but I could not find anything that helps the player truly figure out where to go or what to do. The player simply needs to find the specific journals that will unlock the answers to the secret pathways and combination locks. Otherwise, I could not find any real consistent lighting. There is sometimes lighting or sound that draws the player in, but it's not consistent. There's no lighting, markings, or other indications of guiding the player to the correct place. However, the game is fairly linear, so it's not an actual issue. You will be barred and locked out of certain areas until you find an answer or a secret passageway, so the player is guided somewhat to investigate the areas beforehand more. The mechanics are all intuitive, but some of the controls are directly told to the player. The analog sticks are explained in the loading screen before the first area, and then some of the controls, like looking through your backpack and how to look further, are explained while you're looking for the key to open the first door. The player must otherwise figure out the controls, which are single button presses, and figure out how to proceed, which starts with interacting with the only object in the area to find a key. It is mostly intuitive and makes sense based on how locks work. You ain't got no key, you ain't got no entry. The game is very thematically intertwined. Although I think the horror detracts from the game, the spirit stuff is noted in some of Sam's notes about seeing a ghost and inviting her girlfriend over to discover the ghost. Katie has never been in the house before, so she has no idea where to go and is scouring every corner of the house for clues on where everybody went. Why is everybody gone? The flickering lights are explained as poor electrical work, and the secret entrances were additions added by the great uncle. It's all explained to make sense, except why the door to the east wing is locked. 
It's inside the house. Why is that locked? It makes no sense. The game is a pretty good, somewhat implicit tutorial, although the initial loading screen will have the walk-in camera controls, as if the analog sticks haven't served those functions for years. The camera faces the new house that they've never been in, can't go backwards, and thus must enter the house. There are a few interactable objects, but one reveals a key, which can be taken to unlock the front door. The inventory and focus buttons are directly taught, but the other actions are not. This teaches the movement, the interact, the throwing, the crouching, and potentially the focus commands of gameplay, and the mechanics that the doors will be locked until the character discovers an entry point. The villa is then completely dark to show that no one is home. Nothing is directly stated, giving the player a chance to experiment autonomously, and it is very strictly condensed to force the player to experience the requirements and setting of the game. The only action told to the player afterwards is the map button, but that appears when the player finds a secret passageway from a note. But implicitly, you could just do this by saying map updated instead of using the button for the map. The game is designed with contrasting colors and highlighting for important files. This way, the foreground, background, and interactable objects are all easily distinguished. It is easy to tell what files are important and what are just extra info. The game has a pause and main menu with different pages for options. The options are broken into graphics, gameplay, sound, along those lines, but the options within all make sense, and it is intuitive where to find specific things. All the text is legible, large, contrasted against the background, and the menu is easy to navigate. There is a map in the game with clear architectural design and a legible legend against a dark background. The game has mid-low graphics, nothing too spectacular, but everything is somewhat detailed and pretty. The style of the game is realistic and dulled in color and lighting, which helps emulate the fact that it's midnight during a rainstorm, but also creates the horror environment that still makes no sense to me. The character actually has no visible model, so there are no animations for her, but there are some animations for the objects, which are simple movements with gravity and turning a page. The few animations in the game are realistic and simplistic. The style works to make the objects discernible and unique from each other, helping to reduce the frustration of pixel hunting since the player can easily tell what can be interacted with. The game has standard accessibility. The colors are contrasting enough to be differentiated, it highlights main objects to make them clear, and there is a voiceover for the main story. The text in the game is all handwritten, which can be a little struggle to read, and the main text is written in a strange font, but there are only a few words for that, so it really shouldn't be an issue for those with disabilities or issues with less school comprehension. When replaying a game, the menu does have some lines with very condensed line spacing, which makes the text in the different lines run into each other, but again, this only happens once and the information is very typical about overriding a save and you can't get it back. There are options in the game to turn off certain things, like the head bob for movement, which could cause some issues with dizziness, the reticle, Katie's thoughts and text, and the highlight for the main objects can be turned off as well. Most text in the game is handwritten, but there is an option for Arial 12 point font overlay, which obviously helps those with visual impairment and reading comprehension. I personally had trouble reading some of it, but then again, I almost failed kindergarten because I couldn't read, so maybe I'm not the best subject for this. That is not a joke, I actually almost failed kindergarten because I couldn't read. Overall, there are plenty of options to help navigate the story and the game for all types of players. For a final score, I give the gameplay a 31 out of 35, the story a 5 out of 5, the sound a 4 out of 5, mechanics a 25 out of 30, the tutorial a 4 out of 5, the UI UX a 5 out of 5, graphics a 4 out of 5, and accessibility a 5 out of 5. Overall, I give this game a 5 out of 5 for walking simulators. For those who enjoy walking simulators and stories, I highly suggest this game. Despite the contrasting atmosphere, there are no jump scares or ghosts except for the single one instance, don't pick up the crucifix if you don't like jump scares. The main story builds slowly, although the end is a bit anticlimactic, but it is a nice reflection of teenage love and the struggles of queers in the 90s and the early aughts. I've seen many people online dismiss the story as ridiculous or boring, but perhaps because I've seen all these things personally, both in terms of the queer love, the parents' relationships, the parents' denial of their child, not really understanding, a lot of that kind of thing, it had a strong resonance with me, and maybe that's why I like it so much. Maybe you won't if you don't like these things. The base theme is to talk to people and listen. You may not like or agree with what someone says, but you must accept their emotions and how they feel if you deny, reject, or dismiss their opinions or feeling outright, you will push them away. I found that all the relationships were realistic and were shown with just enough details to get you attached over time. If you have problems with familiar relationships or queer relationships, obviously, this is not for you, but I do think that most people who are inclined to story-focused games would enjoy Gone Home. Thanks everybody for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, subscribe, ring the bell to be notified of future videos. 
if you have any constructive criticism. Things that you think that I missed, things that you think that I got wrong on, or things that you think are interesting about this game or similar games, please put them in the comment section below. That way we can continue this discourse and continue the review for Gone Home. But that does it for this video. Until next time, wale te omnes.